guys, it's Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. What I wanted to cover today in this video was I want to cover a piece of gear that's very underrated and I think it's oftentimes overlooked in a woodsman's kit. And that piece of gear is called a kerchief. And a kerchief basically is a French word which means head cover. And kerchiefs that were used at the turn of the century, back in colonial times, during the Civil War, during the days of westward expansion, most of the time they were a pretty big bandana or handkerchief. And the one that I've got on right now around my neck is actually just a piece of dyed linen fabric. This one happens to be three feet by three feet. And this is the size or the norm for a kerchief. A handkerchief would be a smaller one that fit in your hand. The kerchief was generally either square or it was triangle, and it was made for a head covering, obviously, as the word implies in French. But it was used for a lot of things, and we have a lot of these kerchiefs now that are used in the world of bushcraft, survival, woodcraft, camping, whatever you want to refer to it as. But sometimes I think they're overlooked as far as their versatility goes. And this is just a normal, like I said, a normal 18th century style or later kerchief, which is just a piece of three foot by three foot dyed linen material that's been hemmed along the edges. I've got a couple other examples here of modern day things. This is a what's called a sniper's veil, and it's about the same size kerchief, but it is made out of a netting mesh material, which makes it very conducive for things like using as a minnow seine or some type of a dip net, which gives it advantages over something like this that's solid. A combination of these two may be a very good carry. Then you have what's known as the smog, and these are very popular with tactical people right now. Um, this one's a desert tan color, and it's about three foot by three foot. And it's basically almost like a prayer shawl type thing. But it can be used for all the same purposes as the normal kerchief or the sniper veil. So these are just three examples that we see commonly today. And what I want to talk about with these things is I want to talk a little bit about what can we do with these things and what's the usefulness of carrying something like this or two in our kit. Well, obviously, a bandana has a lot of uses. We've talked about that in a couple other videos, I think. But this is an oversized bandana, very much oversized, being three foot by three foot. And this is the size that we recommend when we teach our basic classes. We recommend that people carry at least three foot by three foot pieces of cotton material. It's important that it's a natural material like cotton because, or linen, because I can then make char cloth from this material. Obviously it's also good for bandages. It's good for a, an arm sling if I needed to make one to isolate an arm or something like that. Three foot's big enough I can get that thing around, tie a knot in it, and I can make a sling out of it. It's big enough to use to tie around things if I were to try to make a splint or something like that. So it's a very good first aid item. Obviously it's good for washing and hygiene, wiping the sweat off your brow. It's good filtration material if needs be to get particulates out of your water. There are lots and lots of things that you can use this for that are easily known purposes or things that we have discussed in other videos. What I want to discuss with you today is just a couple other uses for this that it's not so well known for or maybe those things have been forgotten. And the first one, like I had it on when I got here, is just a normal kerchief and what that does for you is several things. I'm going to take this wool jacket off and lay it aside for a minute here and put this back on and what I've done with this is I have just divided it into a triangle just like this and then taken that triangle and thrown it over my shoulders like this and what that does is that gives me a double layer of that material over my shoulders on both sides and in the back and then if I tie that in the front, it's going to, number one, and usually when I tie mine, I tie them kind of like this. And you could put some type of bola or something like that on or a bolo on there that would slide up the fabric. I generally just tighten it in a knot like this. But what that's going to do is that gives me good protection in the cold weather for heat escaping through my neck. And a, more, a vast majority of the heat can escape through your head and neck when you're walking around in the winter time or when you're laying in a sleeping bag because that's usually the area that's exposed in your sleeping bag if you don't have yourself completely covered in. So this will help you retain that body heat. Because you've got that double layer over the back of your core like that, 
It also holds in good heat and insulation underneath the garment like the wool jacket. Now, with it in this configuration like this, I can also, if I take off the hat, I can pull up half of this, just like this, and pull it over the top, leave the other half down, pull this over the top, and it becomes almost like a hood. And if I tuck the corner in, over the top, kind of like this, now I can pull this thing over and I can use it for a hood. I can put a hat on top of that if I want to. That's going to give me just a little extra protection around my ears and things like that if I'm not wearing the proper winter headgear. It can also be used especially with the netting type material that you can see through really well. It gives you a bit more of a breakup of camouflage if you're hunting and it's very easy just to flip it back down over the top like this. So that's a very good use for that piece of garment. Of course, you could also wear it in traditional fashion, where you actually put it on top of your head in a triangle, which I don't see done, done very often anymore in the bushcraft and survival community, but it is good for that as well. You can pull that thing right down in the front, tie that dude off, and you basically have a ready-made hood that's already there. Now, it's not going to give you as much protection in the back that way, but in a warmer weather climate or an arid climate where you're trying to create a microclimate of shade, this is a very good way to operate. Again, it's also very good for breaking your outline up and things like that when you're hunting. Then you can put your jacket right on over the top of this if you want to. So it works that way for a hood as well. You can also use this as a carrying device or a container and that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so I've taken the Shemog now and I've just tied it around my waist like a belt, like just like a piece of rope almost. And now I can take one of the other ones like this one if I wanted to make a game bag or this one if I wanted to make a poke. And I can just take and fold it in half just like this. Bring up the third side like this. And then here's the fourth side. If I take these first three sides and tuck them up inside like this, Pull one side out and tie it off like this into basically a knot. That leaves me one tag free plus a tag that's hanging. Now I can take some other piece of gear or whatever I'm trying to carry like this container, put this container in the poke, bring this up and tie it to this one just like this and I've basically created a belt pouch. And I can draw that up as tight or as loose as I want it. I can give myself a little room to where I can get inside there to put tinder or whatever inside there. And then I can slide that thing around where I need it so that I can walk around and carry that as a waist type pouch right there. And that will work for goods or it will work for game or it will work for tinder or anything that you're trying to carry. You can carry it just like that if you have two of these. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can use one of these as a waist type pack. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. It's very, very simple. Okay, so if I've got, let's say I've got some gear here, a couple pieces of material, maybe these are clothes, I've got my container, and I don't have anything to carry them in, I can make this very easily by laying it out in diamond fashion, just like this. I can take those items, put them inside, just like this. I can then take and fold this up on itself, just like this, fold this around the back side, take this and twist it a couple of times, just like this, same thing on this side, twist it the opposite direction like this, and then I can pull that whole thing up, put that on my waist, tie that on, and give myself a butt pack of sorts. There we go. Now I've got a butt pack that I can carry my gear in. If I don't have any other way of carrying my gear, this is the way I can do it. I can bundle tinder up in here or resources that I've collected along the trail and it gives me hands free to be able to carry this back to camp. 
So that's a very good purpose for this kerchief that you can use that makes it even more multifunctional. Okay, so if I've got a whole lot of stuff I'm putting inside this kerchief and maybe I'm not going to have room when I'm done because it's going to be so bulky, there's not going to be enough room for me to be able to put this around my waist. Maybe I don't have two of these, maybe I only have one. I've got some spare clothing or I've got a lot of tinder or firewood I'm trying to carry, whatever the case may be. I can take this thing and tie it down straight down on top of itself, just like this, as tight as I can get it. And then put a stick in here, just a stick like I would use on my fire to hang my pot off of. Lay that right beside this knot, then come in and tie straight on top of that, as tight as I can get it, just like this. Go around that stick one time here, go around the back side here to double that up. Tie a knot in that thing, and now, you know, I've got myself a hobo poke, and I can put this over my shoulder and go. So now, I can just shove this over my shoulder. I've got my camp stick or my walking stick right here, put my poke over my shoulder and take off into the woods with whatever I've got in my poke. And that's just another use for that piece of material, that kerchief. So you can see there's a lot of different applications for this thing and if it was orange, it would make a great signaling device. So I would encourage you to carry a couple pieces of material in your kit that are at least three foot by three foot square. Natural material is always going to be the best because it can be made into charred material in an absolute emergency. Well, I'm Dave Canterbury at the Pathfinder School. I thank you for joining me for this video. I thank you for everything you do for me, for my school, for my family, my friends, affiliates, sponsors, and instructors. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.